Hello everyone. Welcome to my class. In today's class, I'm going to cover Taylor series, Macron series, and binomial series. So let me start the class right away. Suppose the power series centered at A has positive radius convergence R. This means that the power series converges to some functions fx on the intervals a minus r, comma a plus r. Then for all x in the intervals of convergence i, fx can be written as power series centered at a. In this section, we used to find the values of the coefficient cns in terms of the derivative of fx at x equals to a. It turns out that cn equals to nth derivative of f evaluated at a over n factorial. And we use a convention that f 0th power equals to f. That is, 0th derivative of f is f itself. Let's move on. The definitions, Taylor series. The series of the form summations n equals to 0 to infinity nth derivative of f evaluated at a over n factorial x minus a to the power n is called the Taylor series for fx centered at a and is written as fx equals to so that's a compact form and in the expanded form fx equals to f of a plus f prime evaluated at a over 1 factorial x minus a plus f double prime evaluated at a over 2 factorial times x minus a outside square plus f triple prime at a over 3 factorial times x minus a power 3 plus dot dot dot. Note the special case of the Taylor series expansions about origin is called the Macron series. Awesome. I'll give you the definition of Macron series later. The Taylor polynomial, the partial sum of the Taylor series, the summations k runs from 0 to n, f kth derivative of f at a over k factorial time x minus a outside power k is called the Taylor polynomial and is generated by t n x. Remark the first degree Taylor polynomial is just a tangent line to f x at a such as t1x equals to f of a plus f prime a x minus a. Great. So Macron series, the Macron series is the Taylor series centered at origin. So we write fx equals to, this is the compact form, and the expanded form turns out to be f of 0 plus first derivative of f evaluated at 0 over 1 factorial times x plus second derivative of f evaluated at 0 over 2 factorial times x square plus so on. Another definition, binomial series. It is the Taylor series for 1 plus x to the power k where k is any real number around the base point origin and we write as 1 plus x to the power k equals to that's the Macron series or that's the Taylor series expanded at origin and here the coefficients f the nth derivative of f evaluated at 0 over n factorial we can rewrite as k choose n where k choose n is this constant term here in another representations, this turns out to be k factorial over k minus n factorial times n factorial. But let's jump to the last line here. So 1 plus x to the power k turns out to be 1 plus kx plus k times k minus 1 over 2 factorial times x square plus k times k minus 1 times k minus 2 over 3 factorial x cubed plus dot dot dot. The coefficients kn, read as k choose n, is called the binomial coefficients and is defined by k choose n equals to this expressions or in factorial form, which I put already here and here. Great. 
Note, the questions of whether or not the binomial series converges at the end point plus minus 1 depends on the value of k. It turns out that the binomial series converges at 1 if k is between negative 1 and 0, excluding negative 1, and at both end points if k is greater than or equals to 0. Aside, the so binomial theorem is the statement is x plus a outside power k and its expansion turns out to be summations and runs from 0 to k, k choose n, this is the coefficients, times x to the power k minus n times a to the power n. Awesome. Quick example. The binomial expansion of x plus a to the power 3 turns out to be x cubed plus 3x square a plus 3x a square plus a cubed. Similarly, the expansion of x plus a to the power 4 turns out to be x4 plus 4x cubed a plus 6x square a square plus 4x a cubed plus a4. Using this binomial theorem, we can expand x plus a to the power any power. So let's say x plus a to the power 10, we can expand easily. Great. So let's do some example. Example 1, find the Taylor series for the following functions centered at given value of a. Questions part a, given function is 1 over 1 minus x and the center is origin. So that means we are finding the Maclaurin series of 1 over 1 minus x. Great. So let's begin the solution. Make a table and then represents the number of derivatives. So given function fx, we are taking the derivatives and we are evaluating the derivative at center origin and also we are computing the nth term here. So first, n equals to 0 means the zeroth derivative function itself evaluated at 0, x equals 0, so it turns out to be 1 over 1 which is 1. So and the nth term is this is 1 over 0 factorial. 0 factorial is 1, so 1 over 1 is 1. x to the power 0 is 1, so it's simply 1. Put n equals to 1. Take the first derivative of 1 over 1 minus x, which turns out to be 1 over 1 minus x square. You have to use a chain rule here. And the evaluate the first derivative at x equals to 0, which turns out to be 1. And the nth term is the coefficient is. 1 over 1 factorial, which is 1, but x to the power 1 is x, so simply x. Similarly, put n equals to 2, find the second derivative of the functions, which turns out to be the first derivative of 1 over 1 minus x outside is square, which is 2 over 1 minus x outside power 3. Evaluated the derivative at x equals to 0, turns out to be 2. We can write 2 as 2 factorial. Then in the nth term, so 2 factorial over the 2 factorial cancel, so simply x is square. Similarly, the third term comes to be x to the power cubed. Great. Hence, our Taylor series expansion of given function is fx equals to, this is the formula, which is the nth term here, and summation, summations, x to the power n which is 1 over 1 minus x. The expanded form is 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus dot 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 and its compact form. This turns out to be summation xn and runs from 0 to infinite. I hope this computation makes sense to you all. Now let's move on. If the questions ask us to find the radius of convergence and interval of convergence, then we can use the ratio test. The ratio test says limit n goes to infinite, our absolute value of the ratio of n plus 1th term over nth term equals to here, xn plus 1 over xn, it turns out to be absolute value of x. Consequently, the power series converges when absolute value of x less than 1. So this implies radius of convergence is 1. Solve for x, so interval convergence turns out to be negative 1, comma 1. If we put x equals to 1 half here, then it turns out that 1 over 1 minus 1 half is simply 
2 then the right side is 1 plus 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus dot 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 so it's which is this one here great I think we already discussed these types of series in our preceding section so some a and 1 over 2 to the power n gives us simply 2 we verified here also awesome let's move on part b given function is sine functions and given center is origin again we are computing Taylor series at origin that's the Maclun series so make a table n nth derivative functions nth derivative function evaluate at origin and the nth term put n equals to 0 so 0th derivative of a given function is itself sin x so evaluate sin x at origin 0 we know sin 0 is 0 so the nth term also turns out to be 0 put n equals to 1 so first derivative of sin x which is cosine x evaluate cosine x at origin which is cosine 0 is 1 and the nth term turns out to be simply x and similarly here in the last column here all the even terms zeroth terms means second terms fourth terms turns out to be zero and only the odd terms remains so that means in general our nth term will be here is a negative one to the power n times x power t n plus one over t n plus one factorial hence sin x tell us it is expansion about origin turns out to be in expanded form x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the power 5 over 5 factorial minus x to the power 7 over 7 factorial plus dot 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 or in compact form summations and runs from 0 to infinite negative 1 power n times x to the power 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial great similarly we can find the interval convergence and radius of convergence let me skip this part and now from the Taylor series expansion of sine x about origin we can easily find the Taylor series expansion of cosine x about the origin just by taking the derivative just by taking the derivative of this sine expansion so on my left side here sine x derivative is cosine x then the we can take the derivative of the power series term by term so derivative of x becomes 1 derivative of x cubed becomes 3x square and 3 and 3 factorial so we can rewrite 3 factorial equals to 3 times 2 factorial then 3 3 cancel so then second term is x square over 2 factorial and so on so we have the Taylor series of cosine x it turns out to be summations negative 1 power n times x to the power 2n over 2n factorial. Great. Similarly, by plugging x square equals to x in the Taylor series expansion of sine x about origin, we can find the Taylor series expansion of sine x square about origin, which turns out to be this expansion here. We can also find the Taylor series expansion of x times cosine x. Simply, we multiply the the series expands on cosine x by x it turns out to be here awesome i hope this idea makes sense to you all and let's move on part c let's find the taylor series expansion of e to the x at origin begin the solutions make a table here is a zeroth derivative of e to the x is itself evaluate at zero which so e to the 0 is 1 so the nth term also is 1 then we take the derivatives of e to the x first time second times third times it turns out to be itself evaluate at evaluate the derivative at origin it turns out to be 1 1 1 1 so the nth term turns out to be 1 x x is square over 2 factorial x square over 3 factorial and so on hence the Taylor series expansion of e x turns out to be 
e x equals to in expanded form 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus dot 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 or in compact form it turns out to be simply summations and runs from 0 to infinite x to the power n over n factorial. Great. Now let's move on. So some observations. So we know the Taylor series expansion of e to the x about origin. So then if you substitute x equals to 1, then it turns out to be the series of e, which is simply 1 over n factorial. The n runs from 0 to infinite. Similarly, summation n runs from 0 to infinite of negative 1 to the power n over n factorial turns out to be 1 over e. Similarly, we have the Taylor series expansion of e to the 2x. Similarly, e square. Similarly, e to the x square. Similarly, e to the power negative x square and so forth. Great. We are just deriving these observations from the Taylor series expansion of exponential function e x at origin. Great. Now, moreover, let's see the patterns in this Taylor series expansion. e to the x is this form we just discussed earlier. Now, now the Taylor series expansion of cosine x and sine x turns out to be first the cosine x, it turns out to be 1 and it's the third term with the opposite sign and then the first, second, third, fourth, fifth terms, same sign, and then the seventh terms, means all the even's power of x here. And for the sine x, tell us its expansions, it turns out to be the odd power of x in the expansion of ex. So here is x, here is opposite sign, here is a plus sign, here is opposite sign, and so on. e to the power ix equals to cosine x plus i sine x, and this formula is called Euler formula. This is useful in differential equations class. Okay, so let's move on. Let's do example two. Find the Taylor series for the following function centered at the given point A. So, questions two, part A, given function is sine x and center is pi. So, first make a table. So, 0th derivative of given function is itself. Evaluate the sine x at 0 is 0. Take the first derivative of sine x, which turns out to be cosine x. Evaluate cosine x at a pi. Turns out to be negative 1. And the nth term turns out to be negative 1 over 1 factorial time x minus pi to the power 1. I hope this makes sense to you all. Similarly, so here's n corresponds to the successive derivatives of given functions and here is the derivative functions, here is the value of the derivatives and here is the nth term. So here it turns out that for the sine functions, it turns out that for the sine functions, all the even terms disappear, so only odd terms are left. So that means the formula is fx equals to summations and runs from 0 to infinite of negative 1 to the power n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial times x minus pi to the power 2n plus 1. Great. Another question is part b. Given function is natural log of x and center is 2. So make a table. Here is n. Here is the nth derivatives of ln x. Here is the values of the derivatives at 2 and here is the nth term. So 0th derivative ln x itself put x equals to 2 ln 2 nth term turns out to be ln 2 put n equals to 1 first derivative derivative of ln x is 1 over x put x equals to 2 which is 1 half and then the nth term is 1 half over 1 factorial time x minus 2 power 1. Similarly, 
I computed up to fifth derivatives here. Then the, the Taylor series of ln x at x equals to 2 turns out to be ln x equals to ln 2 plus summations and runs from 1 to infinite of negative 1 power n plus 1 times 1 over n factorial times 2 to the n times x minus 2 to the power n. Great. And we can use again ratio test to find the radius of convergence and interval convergence which is given here. So I hope you can easily compute i and r using ratio test that we cover in our preceding sections. So now let us move on. Example 3 find the binomial series for the following functions. Function is 1 plus x to the power 1 half. So here the binomial series expansion formula is 1 plus x to the power k is this one here. I give you the formula. And for our equations, our k turns out to be 1 half. So let's use k equals 1 half in this formula. Then it turns out that 1 plus x, radical 1 plus x, equals to 1 plus x power 1 half. Then equals to on the right side 1 k is 1 half, so 1 half x plus 1 half times 1 half minus 1 over 2 factorial x squared plus dot dot dot. I just plug in the value k equals to 1 half in this formula. And then here we just simplifying the coefficient and it turns out that radical 1 plus x equals to 1 plus x over 2 minus x squared by 8 plus 1 over 16 x cubed minus 1 over 32 x to the power 4 plus that that that. Awesome. Let's move on. Part B. If we plug negative x for x in part A solution, then we will get the binomial series expansion of radical 1 minus x, which turns out to be 1 minus x over 2 minus x square over 8 minus x cubed over 16 minus x to the power 4 over 32 minus that, that, that. Great. Let's move on. Questions part C. fx equals to x square over radical 2 plus x. So let's begin the solutions. First idea. So don't worry about x square. Let's use binomial series expansion for 1 over radical 2 plus x. And then multiply by x squared at the end. So here, rewrite 1 over radical 2 plus x equals to 1 over factor the 2. So this is 1 plus x over 2. And we know 1 over radical 2 constant outside. And then the 1 plus x over 2 power 1 half bring to the new matter becomes 1 plus x over 2 power negative half. And let's use for this use binomial series expansion and multiply by 1 over radical 2 at the end. Great. Again, formula is given here. For our case, k is negative 1 half and x is simply x over 2. So, I use the formula here. So, then 1 plus x over 2 power negative half turns out to be this expansion here. This is too long for me to read. <laughs> then, simplify the constant. And hence, x is square over square over this function turns out to be x is square multiplied by x is square over multiplied by this one over radical two. So these terms we multiply to these expressions here. So then it turns out to be this one here. Awesome. I hope this computation makes sense to you all. Now let's move on. Example 4. Example 4 says use the binomial series to expand the functions of 5 over 6 plus x outside power 3 as a power series and also find the radius of convergence r. Let's rewrite. Let's begin the solutions. Let's rewrite the functions equals to we factor 6 out and we take the denominator to the numerator and then we use a binomial series here which turns out to be this form here is our binomial coefficients 
let's expand the binomial coefficients we know the formula is here so here k is equals to minus 3 so minus 3 n we are using the formula here so minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 this all are in product form dot 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 minus 3 minus n minus 1 over n factorial and just simple algebra here simplify it turns out to be this form then let's substitute this negative 3 choose n by this number so which is here then and also we put x equals to x over 6 then it turns out that the given function equals to this power series here so I hope this this makes sense to you all then for the radius of convergence since um, binary series converges for absolute x less than 1 so now here we replace x by x over 6 that means this new power series converges for absolute value of x over 6 less than 1 which I did here multiply by 6 both sides it turns out that absolute x is less than 6 hence radius of convergence is 6 great let's move on example 5 evaluate the integrals as an infinite series if you remember correctly then I mentioned this example in the beginning of chapter 7 and, and I said not every function are integrable and this function is not integrable because we cannot find its entire derivatives but here we are integrating as an infinite series using Taylor series great so solutions we know the Taylor series expands enough e to the x squared turns out to be this one right and the next step let's integrate left hand is integration of e to the x squared and then the right hand side we integrate the power series term by term so let's integrate term by term here on my right side I add the constant of integration in the beginning the, this c is a constant of integrations plus integration of 1 is x integration of x square is x cubed over 3 1 factorial as it is integration of x to the power 4 becomes x to the power 5 over 5 times 2 factorial as it is and so on similarly the nth term is integration of nth term is x to the power 2n becomes x to the power 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 and factorial as it is and plus dot 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 you done great so we use Taylor series to find the integrations of functions great now similarly example 6 we can use the Taylor series to find the limit also so let's compute the limit of this given functions limit x goes to 0 of 1 minus cosine x over 1 plus x minus e x to begin the solutions so the idea is write the Taylor series of cosine x write the Taylor series of e to the x about x equals to 0 and simplify and take the limit that gives the answer so here we know the Taylor series expansion of cosine x about origin turns out to be the expression inside the parenthesis 1 minus as it is and in the denominator 1 plus x as it is minus as it is and the Taylor series expansion of e to the x about origin turns out to be the expression inside the parenthesis and the next line so let's simplify here so we can multiply this minus inside then 1 and 1 cancel so then I have the plus here minus here plus here which is here and in the denominator let's fold this minus inside then minus 1 cancels minus x cancels then all of these signs become negative which I wrote down here and you can factor the x square out and cancel you know power series is continuous I can send the limit inside to each of these terms then it turns out to be that the limit of only the first term is constant after x square cancel out so 1 over 2 factorial in the numerator then the rest are all zeros because all of this expression involves x take x goes to 0 means everything is 0 and the denominator when x square cancel to the numerator then simply I have constant 1 over negative 2 factorial and 
other terms involves x and take the limit as x equals to 0 turns out to be 0. You can cancel 1 over 2 factorial, 1 over 2 factorial, so it turns out to be this minus 1. Great. So we finish these sections as well as we finish this chapter 11. Thank you.